Hi guys and welcome to the next video from Flying Raven Studios. This week's video we're going to look at weathering powders and how you can get that real nice look from them. So come back after this and see what we've done. So let's take a look at how we do this. So I'm going to be using some weathering powder, which is from Forge World, called Black Soot. Uh, I'll later be using some dark earth and some light earth, but we're going to be looking at the, the consistency. So as you can see, it's a real powdery substance. So you just need to be careful when you're using it because it does get everywhere. Um, so just make sure that you've got a nice clean surface that you can use it on. And as you can see, you just put a little bit on the brush, not too much, because as I said, it does, it does go everywhere. And we're going to start at the top, work with kind of getting that soot look. So this is the engine of the drop pod. This is just a drop pod that I've painted um, and I wanted to give it a bit more of a kind of a characteristic look with this weathering powder. There are lots and lots of other different weathering powders out there. These are just the ones that I've got. And if you want to have a look for them, just literally search online and there'll be hundreds of different variants. There's even some packs that you can get, which if you're looking for specific, so like a, a sand weathering effect or a, a, a like more of a mud weathering effect, you can pick up sets of them, which then provides you with everything you need to do those effects. So as you can see, what I've done here is I've started at the top with the, the fan area and then just kind of worked around it and built that up quite slowly. The idea is that you want to build this up slowly. It's not a fast kind of instant effect. It's, it's one that you have to work on as you go. So what you want to do is make sure that you're not overloading your brush. You're just putting the right amount on and gently brushing it on each time, ensuring that you get a nice coverage of where you want. It's a bit like working with an OSL effect. You're looking for that area around where the heat is coming from or the exhaust fumes or whichever it is that you're doing with this, this effect. This will then obviously keep building up and the idea is that you work on it slowly and it is, it is a slow process, but once you've got it, it really does kind of bring that extra life to the model and makes it look really fantastic. But as you can see, we're now kind of coming to the end of where the weathering is done for the soot. And you can see it's really built up and really shows that kind of burnt out smoky look. So now we get to move on to the next bit. So in this next section, we are going to start looking at how to weather the bottom section of it. So the section where it's kind of come into the planetary orbit. We're going to start off with a light earth. Now the idea of this is to kind of get the base colour down to start with. I'm only going to do one panel just so that I can show you the technique behind what I do and how I do it. So you start off and the big thing is that you work up in this case. So you work from where you want the weathering effect to be the strongest. So with this the bottom of the drop pod is obviously going to have come into orbit so it's going to be the one that's probably got the most amount of burn marks to it and scorch marks which is what we're looking for so as you can see i'm kind of building up the color at the bottom and then dragging it up now the idea is that you need to make sure that you drag in the direction that you want it to go don't go down the other way because if you do you can then have kind of weathering the wrong places Now, the next, I'm going to add some dark earth to it. Now, this just gives it a bit more depth. So the, what the light earth does is it starts off, kind of gives you your palette of where you want the weathering to be. And then the dark earth is going to start shading it down because obviously the, the light earth is, is quite bright for a the effect that we're going for. So again, you just kind of work at starting at the bottom, working your way up, getting kind of lighter and lighter but making sure that it really does embed it in so that you get that good transition between the two colors.
Now the last thing that we're going to do is add a bit more of that black scorched effect like we used at the top. Again, this is to darken it down and really kind of show the, the burn marks and the scorch marks that come through. So not just where the, the paint has been peeled, but actually the, the atmospheric burn that has had the effect on this. And as you can see, any of the, the weathering powder that's gone on the piece of paper, in this case that I've got underneath, don't worry about it. just grabbing some of that and using it. You don't want to waste any, so you might as well carry on. But as you can see, that's that panel sorted. So there you go, that's the finished product. I spent some time doing the other panels, obviously off of camera, so you didn't have to sit there and watch it all. But you can really tell that that's got that weathered, dirty effect, as if that has just landed, whether that's landed in some dirt ground or, or landed, but it's come from all at great pace. So I hope that really helps, and I hope that shows the technique and the different ways that you can use weathering powder. And that's it, weathering powders. With a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a little bit of playing around with the environment that you're looking for, you can come up with some really nice looking bits. So I hope that helped, and as always, put the comments in the bottom, hit the subscribe button, bash the like button, and see us next time. Stay safe.